And I really only have another day and a half, two days, before I have to give this up until I return again to New Mexico. This is, uh, today's June 29th, I'm sorry, June 28th, 2009. The last time I was here was May of 2008, about 13 months ago. Now it's starting to stick, so I'm going to take the weight off, take the mirror off, carefully flip it over and set it down. Put a little more grit on. Put down the mirror, just to get dry around the edges, particularly, very quickly. And also here in New Mexico, lately it's been humid, but it can be brutally dry, and evaporation is definitely an issue. Pick up the mirror again, turn it over, carefully lay it on top of the tool, put my 10 pound meat back on top. You hear that loud, loud grinding. One of the things you'll notice is that on top of my Parker barrel, there's quite a bit of what we call swarf. S-W-A-R-F. And that's the excess grit that's pushed off the edge of the mirror during the fine grinding process. And yes, you can use it again. There's no question about that. I'm not right now. I really don't know why other than I've got a boatload of number 80 here. And there's no real need at this time for me to reuse it. Let me say that while I told you I'm here in, uh, in uh, New Mexico, yesterday I took a trip up to Albuquerque and I met with the Albuquerque Astronomical Society. They have a website, taas.org, O-R-G. It's a very nice website. Nice group of folks. They had a general business meeting last night, gave five telescopes to various members of uh, various science teachers in Albuquerque, one high school and I think four middle schools. Out of a number of proposals that were submitted, they chose five of them and made a donation of telescopes, which I thought was just a great thing. Well, I can report to you right now that this 10-pound weight is really working pretty well. It's not hard to keep in place. I want to give it a little while before I measure and see how we're doing. One thing about mirror making is it takes a lot of patience. Pyrex is what I would consider fine optical glass. And this particular blank is a great example. It's a very thick blank, it's a heavy blank. Okay, twice around the barrel with the number 80. Seems to be about the rule. I'm going to move my spirometer and plate glass over to the side. Park it over in a corner.
move my mirror. And again, on top of the tool, you see a lot of the swarf. I've seen folks just glob the number 80 on. And generally speaking, when they do that, it really lengthens the amount of time it takes to finalize the mirror, even to rough, to rough grind the mirror. Just take it easy, not too terribly much at a time. Okay, glass back on top. <coughs> now as you're watching this on YouTube, I would also recommend that you look up Binoscope, B-I-N-O-S-C-O-P-E. He's a Belgian or French gentleman, I forget where he's from, who has some pretty remarkable techniques in grinding mirrors. And he's got a real neat tool that he uses. And I haven't built one, but boy, he's got a great technique and, and I would strongly recommend taking a look at his video. It's an amazing instrument that the man built. Uh, the video is well worth watching. Now I'm being a little brave in building a uh, buck rotor quad sheep spiegler. I can build, I can make pretty good optics. My optics are really second to none and I, I take great pride in that. I just have the right hand movement, the right technique, excuse me for being so arrogant and bragging about it, but I do. But when it comes to carpentry, that's another matter. I don't have that experience. I don't have that skill yet. I will. I'll develop it. But uh, building a sidewalk telescope here before has been a major challenge for me. Now, at my home in Brewster, New York, I have a few machine tools now that I didn't have uh, years ago. Stand by. <laughs> 